Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Courtney Conley and today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite muscles in the body, posterior tibialis. It's dysfunction, why it happens, and then what we can start to do to rehabilitate this tendon that often gives so many of our patients a difficult time. Posterior tibialis is an inverter of our foot. So it's a very big stabilizer of the medial column of the foot. It comes down it wraps around the inside of the foot and it inserts right underneath the navicular bone and it actually has multiple insertion points underneath the bottom of the foot. The strength of this muscle is imperative to control pronation when we walk and also to engage our foot at push off. In fact, if you were to look at EMG studies, it is the only muscle that shows EMG activity the entire time the foot is on the ground in stance phase. So very cool. Therefore, it needs to be strong and it needs to be resilient. When patients report to the clinic with dysfunction of this tendon, they will often say that it hurts when they're walking on their foot. They have pain along the inside of the arch and oftentimes their foot will present in a more of a flat foot appearance. Just because you see a flat foot, by the way, does not mean they're going to have posterior tibialis tendon dysfunction. You have to assess them. So to look at the integrity of this muscle, we will often look at heel raises. There's four stages of posterior tibialis tendon dysfunction. When a patient is doing a heel raise, stage one is they can do a heel raise and you will still see the heel invert at the top of the heel raise. So they come up onto their heel weight raise and you'll see the foot kind of get in this locked position and the heel will invert, but it causes pain. Stage two, we have a little progression. They now do their heel raise, but they can't invert their foot. They can't kind of get into this locked position. So their calcaneus will look straight instead of inverted. Stage one and stage two get very excited because these are your stages where you can rehabilitate the tendon, that is foot strength, that is hip strength, controlling the foot and controlling the rate of pronation. When you get into stages three and four, this foot now, because they've lived in more of a flat foot position, is starting to get rigid. It's starting to get stiff. They can't do a calf raise. It's hard for them to find this locked position of the foot. Those patients will often need some type of orthotic and be careful which orthotic you choose because this foot will often present as flat. If you put a hard acrylic shell or something that's going to be, you know, stabbing them in the arch, right where that tendon inserts, they're not going to like it. So we recommend using a material called a plastizote or something, think of like a tempur bed, something where they can get some type of help from the orthotic because um, in stages three and four, you're going to need it. So now progressing to what do we do to rehabilitate this tendon? If you look at the research and I've attached it to this video, MRI studies have shown that the best way to gain access to strengthening this tension tendon is with forefoot adduction. Okay. So here when the forefoot adducts. So I'm going to show you two places to start that we will work with with our patients. I'll typically start them with an isometric. Um, our goal is 45 second holds, rest for about 30 seconds, and repeat that five times. So there's two separate positions that you can do this in. So for this first one, we know that forefoot adduction is the position we need to foot in. So I'm going to take the band. I'm going to put it underneath my foot. I'm going to cross my foot over my knee. Uh, what the position I'm looking for here is to point my foot and bring my sole of my foot to the ceiling. You should see a tendon kind of pop out here. If the foot is dorsiflexed and you see this tendon, tibialis anterior, it's the wrong guy. You got to point the foot first and then get the sole to the ceiling. So I'm going to take my band on my opposite leg. I'm going to put it on the foot. I'm going to point it and I'm going to lift my sole up towards the ceiling and I'm going to hold here for 45 seconds, five times. Once you've nailed that, then you can start to work on the eccentric component, which is the lengthening. So I'm gonna slowly go down for a count of three and then I'm going to, and I can manually lift my foot up. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, 
And then I'll use my hands to lift because I really want to focus on the eccentric component here. This is option number two. I simply have the band attached to something sturdy, like a heavy desk. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to extend my foot so I'm in a little bit of plantar flexion and I'm going to sweep across the floor and I'm going to hold here 45 seconds, five times. So again, I would start in a neutral position and I'm going to sweep across the floor. You should still feel activation along posterior tibialis, which is in the arch and up the inside here. Again, once you nail 45 seconds five times, you can focus on the eccentric or the lengthening of the muscle. So I would go one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, sweep. One, two, three, sweep. So hopefully this explanation of posterior tibialis has given you information on not only what it is, but also what to do to begin your initial rehabilitation.